I've been on YouTube for around five years now and one of the first big videos that I made was this realistic drawing guide in which I explained how to go about producing a portrait drawing of Will Smith in pencil. Well, five years later, Will Smith is slapping people in the face and I'm probably more known on here for making videos on perspective drawing. But that being said, I've, I've been wanting to go back to my roots recently and so I've decided to make another ultimate realistic portrait portrait drawing guide available at a cheap price of free here on YouTube. Of course if you do want to support the channel I do have a Patreon page where I upload more content, there's a link in the description. But with that being said, let's get on with this. So there's a few things you're going to need to have to be able to create a good realistic drawing in pencil and, and you might have guessed it, one of those things is a pencil. Now there's so many brands of pencils out there to choose from that it can be confusing when it comes to deciding on what to go for. To create this drawing I will be using this set of six pencils from Faber-Castell. If I turn this around you'll see on the back it states that these pencils are of superior quality, ideal for artistic wear demanding studies and sketches. They are also extra brake resistant and easy to sharpen and erase. Now they do have a larger set that contains more pencils at different grades but look I've said it before and I'll say it again you don't need all of those pencils to produce a good drawing. If you watch any of my other videos you'll know that I mostly draw using this and, and only this. This is a, a mechanical pencil, a Uniball Kuru Toga and I have some 2B lead in this. In this set we get 6 grades of pencils ranging from B to 6B. Now in other sets you'll see that there's pencils with a, a grade of H. These are harder pencils that allow you to create lighter shades. I do have an entire video in which I explain grades so I recommend watching that but to give you a, a brief explanation now, the pencils in this set with a grade of B are softer than those pencils that you see with a, a grade of H and the number next to the letter indicates how soft that pencil is. So for example, a 6B is softer than a 2B. You'll become more familiar with these as we start drawing, so don't worry too much at this stage, but in terms of pencils, these are what we will be using. So if there's one thing that we all have in common, it's that we all make mistakes. Now, unlike in life, fortunately, we can erase our mistakes when drawing and then try again. There are two erasers I will be using to produce this drawing. This is just a standard rectangular eraser. You probably have one of these already. It doesn't really matter what you get as long as it does its job and removes the pencil from the paper. We'll be using this when we need to erase larger areas of the drawing. Now for erasing smaller areas, I will be relying on this. This is a Mono Zero eraser from Tombow. I really recommend getting one of these if you haven't already. This works in a way that's similar to a mechanical pencil, right, except there's a, an eraser inside of this that you can replace once it's all used up. You just press the end to push the eraser out. And the reason why this is so useful is because it allows you to be very precise when erasing areas of the drawing. We'll be creating a very detailed drawing and so when we want to erase only a small area of that drawing, this is the go-to tool. Also, we don't just depend on erasers only for undoing mistakes. We'll be using this to pick up some of the pencil work and add some highlights if needed. It's one of those tools that I can't do without now and so I'd say it's definitely worth investing in one of these. Now, something else that we can't do without when creating a realistic drawing is something to draw on. Paper, what paper should you use? There's a lot of different options when it comes to paper and what we want is something of high quality seeing as we are going to be producing a drawing of high quality. Now how I judge the quality of paper when it comes to drawing is based on two things. The first being the weight of the paper, the GSM number that you can find on the front. The higher the GSM, the heavier and thicker the paper. So for instance, printer paper is to be avoided due to it generally having a, a low GSM. If you're drawing on something very thin and flimsy, then it might rip or crease up and we don't want that. 
The second thing that I look at is the paper's surface. You know, if there's a, a texture to it, then I usually avoid it. For example, cartridge paper, although it's usually quite thick and of high quality, you often find that it has this grainy texture on its surface, which can impact the texture we are trying to create when drawing. So now you're probably thinking, Dan, what am I supposed to use then? Well, the answer is simple. I'll be using something called Bristol board. Obviously, depending on the size of your drawing, you can get this in, in different sizes. For this drawing, I'll be using some A4 Bristol board. This is some Bristol board from Windsor & Newton. You can see here that it says it has a, an extra smooth surface and it has a, a GSM of 250. So you're looking at something that's quite similar to CAD and although this is fairly expensive compared to other alternatives, it's worth the investment because you're going to be also investing a lot of time into a drawing so you want something of high quality. So that's what we'll be using to draw. You'll also need a ruler and of course a sharpener to keep your pencils sharp, that's very important. But once you have all of that, you are ready to go. The only thing you need now is something to draw. And so now let's talk about reference images. For this portrait guide, I'll be drawing this image of Walter White from Breaking Bad. Now I've mostly chosen this because it's a character that a lot of people know of, and so just like in the previous guide that I made, in which I had drawn Will Smith, people will look at the thumbnail for these videos and hopefully say, wow that's a good drawing of Walter White, I want to know how to do that, and then they click on the video. But that's not just the only reason, right? There are some other reasons for why this image here is a good choice. One of them being that this is an image with high resolution. You can see when I zoom in here that there's a, a lot of detail here. You can see the pores in his skin and so all of this detail here is what we'll be recreating in our drawing. So whatever it is you are drawing, it will make your life a lot easier and probably result in a better drawing if the reference image you use has a high resolution. It doesn't have to, it's fine, if not, we'll be drawing what we see anyways, at least that's how I approach these kinds of drawings. When you are looking for good quality reference images on Google, let's say, a tip that I have is to come over to where it says tools and then over to where it will say size. You can then change that to large. Now you'll only find larger images that typically have a, a better resolution. Now when I start drawing, I'm going to have the image on my computer screen in front of me where I can zoom in and look at all of that detail, but then I'm also going to have a printout of the image at the same size as I'm drawing it at. Of course, that's just optional, and I'm mostly doing that for the purpose of this guide. Usually, I'll just have a, an image on screen in front of me, and that's it. So this is everything you will need to start creating your drawing and I've linked all of this equipment in the description of this video. Now in the next part, we'll start to outline the drawing using the grid method, which is probably the most important part of any drawing because we need to make sure the proportions are accurate and we set off to a good start. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this first part and look forward to more of them. Please leave a like if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.